Let's continue to study the weak forms. We have seen the weak forms of prepositions and articles. Now we'll see the weak forms of auxiliary verbs. So let us start with weak forms of auxiliary verbs. You know auxiliary verbs? Auxiliary verbs is a grammatical category which help the main verbs and they are limited in number. So we are going to understand the weak forms of the auxiliary verbs as well as the strong forms. Let's start with the first one. What is this? Am. We generally call it am because am is its strong form and um is its weak form. What is its weak form? Um. Now look at this example. I am a teacher. I am a teacher. Say it. I am a teacher. This is the weak form. I am a teacher. I am a teacher. Not am. I am a teacher. I am a teacher. If you, if you say it fast, it becomes I am a teacher. Right? I am a teacher. I am a teacher. That is am. I am a teacher. Okay. The second is is. The strong form is is. And weak form. There are two weak forms of is. The first is is. You can see it. The bus is late. The bus is late. And the boy is late. The boy is late. The bus is late. And the boy is late. Can you see the difference? If is is used, the bus is late. If the if is used after the consonant sound, it is pronounced as is. And if it is used after a vowel sound, it is pronounced as is. You can see the example. The bus is late. The bus is late. Got it? The bus is late. And here, after all, it is the boys, the boys, the boys late. Are you getting it or not? The boy is late. The bus is late. Say it. The bus is late. The bus is late. The bus is late. The boy is late. The boy is late. The boy is late. The bus is late. Okay, you understood it. I suppose you understood it. The bus is late and the boy is late. These are the two examples. Now, if there is an example like the chair is on the floor. The chair is on the floor. So what are you using? You're using is. The chair is because r is a consonant. Right? And if instead of chair if there is a word T. T is in the cup. T is in the cup. T is in the cup. So you're using z. T is in the cup. T is in the cup. T is in the cup. Got it? So this is how is and z are used. And the difference lies because of the consonant and the vowel it follows. Right? Okay. See the third one. It is R. Its strong form is R. It's R when it is followed by a vowel. Otherwise it's R. Not R. Okay. And its weak form is a. Uh, in the connected speech, we generally use weak forms, not the strong forms. Okay, see the example. What is this? They are late. They are late. Confusing? 
Then why are you not say they are late? Okay? They are late. They are, they are eating. It is R. R is pronounced because it's followed by a vowel. Right? Here it is not pronounced because it is followed by a consonant. L. L is a consonant. E is a vowel. Therefore, they are eating. They are late. Got it? Okay. Next is was. Its strong form is was. Then B form is was. 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 It's written in here. So, the example is he was late. He was late. Look at this was. He was late. He was late. Say it. He was late. Loudly. He was late. He was late. He was late. Ah, it's like that. He was late. The next is? Where. Yeah. Mm, that's a mistake. It's not where. It's were. Yeah. Were. You can see it here. Were. 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 It's the strong form. Strong form is were. We form is were. Or were. It is were if it is followed by a vowel and it is were if it is followed by a consonant. Were and were. See the example? What is this? They were late. They were late. Were. They were late. Got it? They were late. Because this is a consonant, right? They were late. Now see, this is a vowel. So example is, they were eating. They were eating. Because he is a vowel. They were late. They were eating. See, they were late. They were late. They were eating. They were eating. They were late. These are the examples. B. It's simple. B. It's simple. It's Weak form is also B. I will be late. I will be late. I'll be late. I'll be late. That's simple, easy, right? You can understand. I'll be late. Now come to this side. It's been. Been. This is the strong form when you pronounce E long. Been. Been. And short form is been. See the example? His bin. Can you read that? Can you read that example? That's very interesting. His bin to Delhi. What is that? His bin to Delhi. Do you know Delhi? Mumbai, Delhi, Pune, Aurangabad. His bin to Delhi. See, you're using. Short form of his, right? His. Z. We've learnt it here. Right? His. We, we are using short form of bin. His bin. We are using short form of, uh, weak form of to, to. His bin to. And then. His bin to Delhi. His bin to Delhi. Similarly, you can see he's been to Pune. He's been to Mumbai. He's been to Aurangabad. He's been to Lahore. He's been to some place. He's been to Ahmadpur, right? See, he's been to Ahmadpur. It's not to Ahmadpur because it is followed by a vowel. So it becomes he's been to Ahmadpur. And if it is Latu, he's been to Latu. But if it is Ahmadpur, he's been to Ahmadpur. Okay. He's been to Latu. He's been to Aurangabad. He's been to Nandeg. Ta. If it is followed by a vowel, it becomes to. Ta. I told you English is the language of rhythm, so learning words is not learning the language. Learning rhythm is learning the language. So you just have to say, he's been to Delhi. He's been to Delhi. It's like that. This is have, and it has three different weak forms. Have is its strong form, and it has three different weak forms. And you have to see when these are used. One is how. How is used. When, how is used when have occurs initially in the sentence. Initially means 
at the beginning of the sentence. When it occurs at the beginning of the sentence. For example, can you read it? That's a problem. You, you can't read it. Try to read it. How, yeah, what is this? Seen. And what is this? It. Have we seen it? Have we seen it? And means, have we seen it? Have we seen it? How we have seen it? How we have seen it? Okay. So you're talking about how how we have seen it. How we have seen it. You say how we have seen it. How we have seen it. Right. And the second is <laughs> only. <laughs> and this is used after personal pronoun pronouns. After personal pronouns. For example, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Say it. I've seen 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 it. It's like that. Okay. After personal pronouns. And this is of elsewhere. Elsewhere in the sentence. Medially in the sentence. Elsewhere medially in the sentence. It is not in the beginning of the sentence. What is the example? What have we have seen? What have we have seen? What have we have seen? What is that? What have we have seen? What is that? What have we have seen? Right. What have we have seen? What have we have seen? Okay. Now this is has. It has, it has three different forms again, similar to how. Okay. The first is has if it occurs initially in the sentence, it is has. So, what is that? Has he come back? Has he come back? Has he come back? Yeah, yeah. Has he come back actually? But he, when it occurs in the sentence, it becomes e, right? So, has he come back? Has he come back? Has he come back? Yeah, has he come back? It is like that. Has he come back? We're talking about this. Now, similarly, as in the middle of the sentence. Okay, what is this? The, the roses color. The rose is color. The rose is color. The lions died. The lions died. You know, lion? Tiger, the tigers died, the lions died, the foxes died. Anything. So sometimes has is pronounced as z, the lions died. And the last one, had. This two has three different three forms that are had, d, at. When is had used? Had is used when it occurs initially in the sentence. Initially in the sentence means at the beginning of the sentence. For example, had he seen it? Had he seen it? Had he, he is he had he seen it? 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 When the is used after personal pronouns, he'd seen it. He'd seen it. He'd seen it. He'd seen. He had seen it. He'd seen it. He'd seen it. Okay. And this is at, elsewhere we use at, the man had seen it, the man had seen it, the man had seen it, the man had seen it. Got it? So these were the weak forms of the auxiliary verbs. Again I'm telling you, English is a stress timed language and we are not here when we speak we are not here to see the words, but the syllables. You see syllables together and you try to find out the, I mean, we try to find out the accented syllable in each of it. So if you look at this, I am a teacher. You can see the stressed syllable is teacher, I am a teacher, I am a teacher. Stressed syllable, right? The verb is late, you can see late is the stressed syllable. And stress is marked by the small line on the top of the letter. Okay. 
the boy is late. The boy is stressed. Stress. The boy is late. So you can see that they are late. They are late. They are eating. Eating. So these are the stresses that also you have to understand. English is the stress time language. We have to understand the stresses. They are very important when you speak. Thank you very much.